Miss Dorothy and her bookmobile. When Dorothy was a young girl, she loved books and she loved people. So she decided that she would become a librarian. She would be in charge of a fine brick library, just like the one where she checked out books in the center of the town square in her hometown in Massachusetts. So she went to Radcliffe College, where she read almost all the books in the big school library. Then she went to library school, where she learned all the things a good librarian should know. Finally, one bright spring day, Dorothy graduated, ready to be a librarian in a fine brick library, just like the one in the center of the square in her hometown. Soon, however, Miss Dorothy fell in love and got married. Her new husband wanted to move to a farm in a land she had only seen on maps but had read about in books, a land of high blue mountains with deep green valleys and cascading streams, splashing silver, shaded with oak, maple, and fir. At the base of High Mount Mitchell in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, The land was lovely there, and Miss Dorothy's garden grew lush and tall. Out in the fields, wild flowers bloomed, red, yellow, blue, and gold. Inside her cozy house, Miss Dorothy read all the books on her shelves. Her new friends and neighbors brought their books to share, just as they shared vegetables from their bountiful gardens. But there was no library and there was no place for Miss Dorothy to be a librarian. Then one day a meeting was called, all of the friends who liked to read. We need a library to store the books and check them out, Miss Dorothy said. Then Dr. Masters, the eldest man in the community, spoke. Once we had a rolling library here, he said. Dr. Wing over at the boys' school shared his books by placing them in every post office, church, and store. He took them from place to place in wooden crates on an oxen wagon. A library is a building with shelves and books and windows, Miss Dorothy said sadly. Mrs. Erickson, the music teacher, took off her hat and placed a dollar bill into it. This is to buy a bookmobile, she said. Everyone placed the money they could spare into the hat, and they all agreed that Miss Dorothy would be the librarian. Finally, the new green bookmobile arrived, and everyone turned out to watch as Miss Dorothy lifted the side panels and propped them on supports so the books were shaded from sun and rain. Many of the people brought books to Miss Dorothy's house, and she stored them in her basement. Every day she struggled up and down the steep staircase, her arms loaded with books to line the shelves of the new bookmobile. And sitting straight and tall, she drove the bookmobile over high hills and through narrow valleys taking books into every schoolyard and to visit every farm, post office, grocery store, churchyard, and parking lot. She stopped at the Tar Heel Mica Mill and she parked at the courthouse steps at lunchtime whenever court was in session. If her readers could not come to the bookmobile, Miss Dorothy took books to them. When elderly Mrs. Maumee had read all her books, she hung her husband's red flannel drawers on the line, and Miss Dorothy climbed the hill with more books to share with her reading friend. Soon everyone learned that Miss Dorothy would check out books whenever and wherever she happened to be, 
even in the middle of the North Tow River, the year the big rains made the rivers into oceans of mud. The embankments grew soft and slippery as she drove around the bend in the river road. Miss Dorothy and the bookmobile went slowly sliding into the rushing waters below. Miss Dorothy crawled out the window to cling to the side of the van until it came to a rest on an island. I thought I would be a real librarian, she told herself, scraping mud from her skirt in a fine brick library in the center of town, and just look at me now. Finally, a farmer on his tractor came down the road and saw the bookmobile. Miss Dorothy, he called, do you have a book of poems I could borrow? As soon as you help me get upright in the van, she answered. When the bookmobile was back on its wheels, she opened the door, swept out the mud, straightened her hair, and with a smile, she said, the library is open for business. The students at Riverside School stood waiting in line, sun or rain, for the little green bookmobile to drive into the schoolyard, its wheels scattering stones at the side of the playground. No one was more excited to see Miss Dorothy than one brown-eyed boy named Ben, who read every book about airplanes and every volume of great adventures Miss Dorothy could find. One day, he told her, I will go see the world in these books for myself. Everywhere Miss Dorothy went, she made new reading friends. One of them was a girl named Barbara, who could not go to school. She spent her days in a wheelchair and had visited a hospital in Massachusetts where she had seen the fine brick library in the center of Miss Dorothy's hometown. Miss Dorothy brought her stacks and stacks and stacks of books. You read them faster than I can bring them, Miss Dorothy told her, but she was smiling the broad smile of a happy librarian who enjoys nothing so much as sharing her books with her friends. One day, a reader donated a little white house to be used as a library. It will have to do, Miss Dorothy sighed, remembering the fine brick library in her hometown. Everyone showed up to clean and paint until the new library was ready to open. The mother's baked cookies, the father's cut firewood for the round black stove. Students loaded the shelves with books. Mrs. Mormy sent her best lace tablecloth and silver punch bowl, and she offered Mr. Mormy's red flannel drawers for the flagpole, too. The years came and went. After a while, awards covered Miss Dorothy's walls, and people came from everywhere to visit her library and write articles about her and her readers. In a land of high blue mountains with deep green valleys and cascading streams splashing silver, Miss Dorothy rarely thought of the fine brick library in the center of the square back home in Massachusetts. She was far too busy in her fine little library where people loved to read and where everyone loved Miss Dorothy. Every day the mail truck brought letters from Miss Dorothy's readers, some nearby and some very far away. One of them came from Ben, now a pilot in the U.S. Air Force. He said, you showed me the world through books, and now I have gone to see it for myself. Thank you for being a librarian. Another letter said, thank you for loving books and for loving people. Although you were never in charge of a fine brick library like the one in your hometown, you are a real librarian. You have readers who love you and the books you share. Thank you for bringing the world to our door. Love, Barbara. The end.